Thank you so much, Johanne, for being with us today in Copenhagen. My pleasure. And now you've been the chairperson of the jury for the Daylight Award 2024. And as a person who has devoted his life to architecture and who has an enormous passion for art, for poetry, for philosophy, why do you think it's important to also integrate the understanding of science in architecture and maybe vice versa? Well, uh, my work has been exactly trying to build uh, bridges between categories. And one of the uh, dividing categories is uh, between science and art. That's the CB Snow, two cultures divide. And uh, in this um, jury, uh, I have uh, experienced a very sincere and, and uh, uh, thorough effort to understand each other. And it, has been, it is a remarkable uh, jury where the scientists have uh, voted for architecture and, uh, and vice versa, we architects uh, vote for the science uh, winners. Um, it is true that science and art uh, deal with the two different wor worlds, primarily with the experiential and existential world, whereas uh, science de deals with uh, the world of uh, facts and uh, uh, quantifiable and, and uh, and uh, rationalized uh, knowledge. But uh, those two worlds interweave, and I, it has been my uh, honor and, and um, privilege to participate in some uh, situations where this mediation is sought for, one being uh, neuroscience. There is, has been now more than 20 years a uh, academy uh, to mediate between neuroscience and architecture. Do you find, now you say it's two different worlds, do you find it easy to interweave, to understand each other? Yes, well, um, understanding the individuals who practice this uh, Different in, in these two different worlds is one thing, and then understanding uh, the essence of the work is another thing. I must say, I couldn't follow too deeply uh, the uh, the uh, qualifications of uh, the candidates for science, but I was listening carefully for the scientists to explain it, mm. and uh, I was very impressed that. Uh, I believe uh, both sides uh, respected the, the uh, other uh, area and expertise in the other area. Also, the scientists were uh, very uh, careful about judging architectural projects. Hmm. Um, personally, have you always integrated daylight in the buildings that you created no. Uh, when I was a young radical student and architect, uh, I was in interested in other things. Uh, the daylight uh, became important to me only after I, I was about 35 years old. And now I consider it the, the most uh, poetic uh, aspect of dimension of architecture. Hmm. And, and earlier when we talked, you said that actually you did not see the buildings in itself as the most, most important things of being an architect. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Yes. Uh, uh, my point of view in, to architecture is grounded in phenomenological philosophy. And um, uh, Maurice Merleau-Ponty has a wonderful line where he says, we come to see not the work of art, but the world according to the work. 
I think this is a very important uh, sentence which uh, reveals the fact that the quality of architecture is not in the, uh, in the building itself, but what it says about uh, the world and being a human being in that world. So architecture is fundamentally an existential and mediating uh, art form. But that applies to all art uh, as well. And then when you want to create a building, how do you then integrate this idea into the buildings that you end up creating? I don't believe they are ideas, they are, they are feelings. When, I, I believe whenever a genuine architect works on a project, he, he or she is working on himself or herself rather than a technical uh, problem. It's feelings and experiences that, that you are uh, dealing with. The material aspects are, are uh, technical aspects are just to, uh, you know, realize those, execute those uh, feelings. Hmm. And how do you see the focus on daylight in architecture today, sort of generally? Is, is there enough focus in architecture on daylight? I think uh, architecture is in trouble uh, everywhere in this world because it has become a technical expertise and, and uh, economic matter. So true architects need to defend their art form. And uh, um, daylight is one of the aspects which makes a uh, very clear sense. So in many ways, architecture, the uh, subtleties of architecture could be taught through this device of daylight. Mm. And I think, and I know you have written books also on daylight, so young architects could really read your books and then maybe I, I have written singular essays, not, not a book. Not a book. I, I, I might yes. write it one day. You have to do that then. <laughs> and also, I know just one more thing before we, we finish this interview. I know when it comes to scientific research on the importance of daylight, we often go back and look on human evolution and the biological fundaments for, for humans. But I know actually as an architect, you also are really interested in the, the history of human uh, development. How come? Well, not only human development. I, I have also studied now, well, I'm now almost 80, 88. I have studied 83 years animal architecture. Animal architecture? Animal architecture. So I am very interested in, in uh, extending uh, notions of architecture to the animal world because they are much superb architects compared to us, but altogether the, the biological evolutionary history is something that we need to study seriously and soon. Uh, for instance, uh, the simple reason why we all feel so nice, so good, uh, stay, uh, being at, uh, next to an open fire is that we have um, been sitting next to open fire 600,000 years. It's deep in our constitution that uh, open fire pro uh, gives protection and, and pl pleasure. Mm. And also, uh, probably, uh, it had a very important role in uh, the evolution of language. Language first started uh, developing as hand gestures and then becoming sounds, probably sitting, sitting by the fire rather than hunting. You wouldn't be making noise when you hunt. So I think it's some really important points that we both need to look at human history, evolution, and also extend it to the animal world, animal kingdom, and also to integrate much more about daylight. So that's why also it, it's a perfect mindset for this uh, daylight award. And of course, Juhani Palasma, we want to thank you for having chaired the jury of this year's awards. And thank you for being with us, and thank you for thank sharing you. your wise and poetic words. So please all give Johanny Palasma a big hand. <laughs>